Today we're going to break and run a rack of 9 ball together. I've put my GoPro on, this means you will see every single shot from the first person view. I'm also going to talk you through what spin I'm using on the cue ball, why I'm using that spin and how I'm adjusting my aiming for the spin. And I'm also going to explain what exactly I'm trying to do on the table. For the break shot, I'm not using the regular break, I'm using the cut break. This means I'm not trying to hit the one ball full in the face, I'm cutting it a bit to the left using low and right on the cue ball. This means the cue ball should come into the long rail and travel towards the center of the table. My goal is to make the wing ball, the six ball into the corner pocket. The one ball might drop into the side pocket. Okay, let's start. All right, we made um, the wing ball and also another ball. I lost the cue ball a little bit, to be honest. So this means I uh, hit a bit too hard. The good news is the one ball didn't drop into the side pocket, which is always our goal, because what happens then is the one ball comes from here and very often ends up uh, right in front or close to the corner pocket. Okay, what can we do here? First of all, let me check if that four ball passes the seven ball. And yes, it does. So this is great news for us. So I think here, all I want to do is just play a high ball, bringing the cue ball from here to that rail, and then have a straight in shot on the four ball. Bit of an angle on that side also works. Here also works, but I think I'm trying to go for that side. So this is just a high ball. I don't have to adjust for any spin here because obviously I'm not using spin. What I could do is also hit rail first. That way I can get a bit closer to the four ball but I think I don't want to risk that. So it's just a high ball. And play it with the right speed. Because we're using no spin, I'm just aiming at the ghost ball. I actually played it a bit too soft here. That's why I'm now left with a bit more angle. But it's still doable. I think here, what I'm trying to do is in the best case, I get straight for the six ball into the corner pocket. That way I can draw a bit back. This angle works. This angle also works. All I don't want to have is too much angle. So I think this is just a center ball actually. So again, um, no adjusting for the side spin because again, I'm not using any side spin. Just going to um, adjust a bit for the cut induced throw. This means the cue ball will push the four ball just a tiny bit to the left. That's why I'm aiming a bit more into that rail. And also, um, if I'm aiming to that side, the pocket is a bit, a bit bigger because I can hit that rail. So just the center ball with the right speed. As I just said, I'm aiming a bit thinner because of that cut and use throw and because I'm actually making the pocket bigger if I'm aiming into the long rail. Imagine you're aiming into the long rail, you're accidentally hitting it too thick, the object ball will still drop. And even if you're shooting the object ball into the long rail, the object ball will also drop. The funny thing about this is I was actually accidentally hitting too thick, but I got away with it just because of the reason that I just described. And what do we have? Well, that's actually okay. A bit too much angle, but actually um, this is basically a very, very natural shot. So now it's very important to know what happens with the cue ball if you just roll it in. And uh, some people might be afraid of the side pocket, but when I'm going down, you should definitely see that the cue ball is not going um, into the side pocket, but it will hit, you know, I think, right around here. So again, I'm going to use a touch of left spin. This will bring the cue ball out, and then in the best case, we end close to straight on the seven ball, or also a bit of an angle on that side works to bring the cue ball into here and then towards the eight ball. On that type of shot, I'm going to use um, a touch of left spin because first of all, we just talked about it here. I have a bit of cut induced throw. This means the six ball would go a bit towards here if I'm using the ghost ball. With that left spin, I am throwing the six ball a bit to the right because of that spin induced throw and that way I can just aim to my usual ghost ball spot. That's why I like to use a bit of outside spin on those kind of shots. And it also helps our position here. So high, left spin, just a regular ghost ball spot. If you're not feeling comfortable, stand up.
Isn't this an amazing principle to use? Yes, it is. But be careful. You can't use this principle on every single cut shot you're facing because there are a couple of factors we need to talk about first. Let's talk about the cutting angle. Coming from my ICA training system, I can see that this is a 30 degree cut and you should know at that angle the cut and use throw is peaking. This means here I have to use the most amount of left spin to compensate for the cut and use throw. If I'm having less angle on the cue ball, like this, then I also need to use less spin and if I'm having more angle, I also need to use less spin, as I mentioned, because the cut and use throw will also be less. And of course, we need to talk about speed. I'm going to hit the same shot as before now with the same amount of spin, the same aiming point on the six ball. The only difference will be I'm hitting really hard this time. What do you think? Where will the six ball go? Will it go into the heart of the pocket? Will it go to the long rail or will it go to the short rail? Take a couple of seconds, think about it, maybe even leave a comment down below. Before I'm actually going to play the shot, let's talk about the theory real quick. Well, what happens with cut and use throw if I'm hitting really hard? The good news is cut and use throw will be less, so the six ball won't be thrown to what's here, but actually goes a bit more into the pocket. What happens with spin and use throw? Spin and use throw is also less, but this is no problem since we don't have to adjust for more cut and use throw. It's no problem that we have less spin and use throw as well. But the big question now is what happens with the deflection? You always have deflection and more deflection if you're hitting really hard. The problem is the deflection will actually push the cue ball to the right. This means the cue ball won't arrive here, but a bit more here and the six ball should go probably into that long rail because I'm hitting really hard. Okay, long story short, let's show you the actual shot. So left spin and a really hard hit. Oh, actually made a foul here. And you can see we accidentally made the six ball, but I definitely hit that long rail. So remember, this only works if you're slow rolling the cue ball. And let's finally talk about distance and cue elevation. First of all, if you're very close, then it's very difficult. This is a really nice distance. The further away you're getting, the more difficult it gets, but not significantly. If the cue ball is here, I would still be very comfortable playing this shot with spin. The only problem is if you're frozen to the rail, for example, because then you have to elevate a bit. And what happens if you're elevating your cue? Yes, the cue ball will make a curve. So I would never play this shot if I'm having to elevate, for example, also over a ball. This becomes just so, so difficult because here I'm elevating, I'm using left spin. The cue ball will make a curve to the left because I'm using left spin. So let's play this shot real quick and show you what happens. Um, basically trying to aim straight or shoot the six ball straight into this rail. This is why I'm just aiming straight, but keep in mind I'm using left spin. So the cue ball will come to the left and the six ball won't hit here, but somewhere on the right. I'll show you how this will look. A bit of left spin. As mentioned, I'm aiming straight on the six ball. And that way I'm able to make that six ball, even though I was aiming it towards here. So you can see the curve is really, really difficult. So if you elevate it, don't use any spin on the cue ball. Okay, now we're going to continue with the break and run. Still um, a couple of things to learn. Enjoy. And we ended almost straight. So now I have two options. I could either play a stop shot. If I'm just rolling it in, the cue ball goes a bit to the uh, long rail. I don't want to be frozen and I don't want to be straight on the eight ball. So I could either just play a stop shot, take a shot from here, which would be fine. What I could also do is follow the ball, get a bit closer to the eight, go into the long rail into the short rail and then have a shot on the eight ball. I think that's what I'm going to do is because I'm just want to get a bit closer to that eight ball. So just a high ball, no spin on the cue ball. A nice shot on the eight ball. I'm not straight, so now I have two options or a couple of options. I could just roll it in, bring the cue ball towards here, and have a shot into the side pocket. But to be honest, I don't like to play the nine ball into the side pocket from its typical spot. That's why I'm trying to bring the cue ball into that area and play the nine ball into here. Just a bit uh, easier, even if I'm not uh, having the perfectly straight angle compared to the side pocket. So here I could either stun out 
or go into that rail. And then here, the problem is if I'm going into that rail, I'm crossing the line a bit because the cue ball comes out like this. If I'm going for the stun shot, you can see the cue ball goes along here and I have um, a nice shot on a nine ball for a longer time. So my position window is a bit bigger. That's why I'm just going to stun it. No spin again. As you can see, I'm adding a bit of unwanted left spin on the cue ball and I'm just hitting a tad too low, as you can see from the cue ball's reaction. Of course, I don't want to end up that close to the nine ball. If the cue ball travels a bit further away from the nine ball, my position window is a bit bigger. Um, the thing is, the closer you are um, to the nine ball, let's imagine the cue ball travels along here, then my position window for the perfect position is pretty small compared to the cue ball travels here, then my position window is a bit bigger. So this actually wasn't a good shot. I also hit a bit too soft, but we still have a very makeable nine ball. Here it's the same principle again, using a touch of outside spin on those kind of shots, um, because then I'm again adjusting for the cut and use throw. And then all I have to do is just aim to the regular ghost ball spot. That's why you will see a lot of people um, using outside spin, even though it's not necessary on those kind of shots. Okay, so think high, some right spin, and then we should be able to make that nine ball. Are you still looking for a Christmas present for family or friends or maybe even yourself? Then check out my new shop on Teespring. I've added plenty of great products and we also have a Christmas 8-ball. If you're interested, check the link in the top. I really hope you've enjoyed today's lesson and if so, I would highly appreciate it if you leave a thumbs up, if you leave a comment, if you subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already, ring the bell notification to get notified once I'm uploading new content. We will see you in the next video on the 5th of December. Until then, thanks for watching guys and as always, see you at the next lesson. Take care.